Hi guys! We are live. We are doing the stay at home with chocolate video today. Hey Club Chocolate. Hello opening chocolate. Hi guys. Hey, I'm just gonna um, kind of whip through this because we don't have a ton of time, but let's get it done. We're making cookies today and I'm making small batch cookies with small batch chocolate and I am I've got two cameras going so I'm gonna be looking from one to the other but small batch cookies with small batch chocolate is something I like to do because I want to use craft chocolate in my cooking but I also want to have some of the bar left to taste so I don't feel guilty about using an entire bar or a ton of craft chocolate in cookies if I'm just making a couple cookies and of course right now it's a really good idea not to have batches and batches and batches of cookies when we're all kind of quarantined at home, or not quarantined, but we're having this stay at home order. So if you make cookies and you only make four of them, you don't feel so bad about eating the entire batch. So, and the other thing about small batch cookies, making very, very small batch cookies is the cleanup is so easy. So, so, so easy. I'm using a regular cereal bowl and a regular spoon. You might use a fork or a knife with these two, but let's get started. So first thing, you can use butter. I'm using two tablespoons of Smart Balance, and that's what I use for this. I've already got it measured out, so you don't have to watch me doing that. Put it in the bowl, and I use two heaping teaspoons of sugar. I am using organic cane sugar. You can use whatever kind of sugar you like for these shortbread cookies. Um, uh, I've got questions. What chocolate do you use? You like Fiji. Well, today we are using Fresco. Put in the cart before the first year. We're using Fresco Madagascar. I know this is their old packaging, but um, I really like it. I like the bar. I like the packaging too. So, first thing you want to do is cream the butter and the sugar. So, part of the science behind the creaming of it is you want to incorporate some air into the um, butter and sugar mixture because. And you want to get that sugar to start to dissolve a little bit so that when the moisture evaporates and creates these little air pockets in your cookies, that's where you get the, the rising effect a little bit. There are no other leaveners in this. There's no leaveners at all in this cookie, so it's a, just butter, sugar, and flour. You can use whatever kind of flour you want to. I like to really, really mix it up. Make sure it's getting very well incorporated in there. If you're using butter, you might want to let it soften a little bit after you take it out of the fridge. The Smart Balance seems to be smooth enough or, or soft enough when you just take it out of the fridge. So that's it. That is my creamed butter and sugar. The other bonus about these cookies is that if you want to, you can leave the bowl because uh, there's no eggs in it. So um, I use a pinch of salt and I'm using so, so little pinch. Just look at this itty bitty, tiny little pinch. Hey, molecular muse. Um, I see you joined. But see that tiny little pinch of salt? I'm just using hardly any salt. This is um, mineral salt, so hopefully it will dissolve in there. It always has in the past. I don't get any big chunks of salt. I like just a little tiny bit of salt in it. And then this is the almond flour. Now, I keep my almond flour in the freezer just so it lasts longer. I think it's a really good idea to do that. Um, and I think that using the really, really cold almond flour helps the cookies maintain their shape better too when I make them. So, quarter cup of almond flour. You can use whatever kind of flour you want to. You can use just regular flour. Mix that up. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see what's going on here. I have to adjust my lighting next time I do this. If there is a next time, you can see it. Little Bill said, "Little, Little Bill said, yes, you can see it." Hi, Silva Cacao. Thank you guys so much for joining. I didn't know if anybody was actually going to join this. <laughs> okay, so now you can see. I really like to mush this in. Can you see the the batter here? Just have a little tiny bit of batter. But I really like to make sure that these ingredients are pretty well incorporated. Otherwise, sometimes the cookies come out a bit flat. They flatten too much. So there you go. And then for the chocolate, I use the Fresco Madagascar bar. There you go. And I've already chopped it up, and I only use one tablespoon of chocolate. So one full tablespoon of chocolate. You can use more if you want to. But in a Fresco bar, let me show you how much that is. It's not even half the bar. This is a 50 gram bar. And this is, well, 
With a fresco bar, you get the big chunk with a fresco, and then you get three little lines, or you get six of these little cocoa pod looking chunks like that. I just used one of those, and of course, one of the other ones that's missing went into the practice batch because you have to practice if you're gonna go live, right? So that's what I use is just one strip like this, two of those. You can use more if you want to, but this is, these are chocolate flecked cookies, so they're not completely chocolate. I'll just stir it in. One of the things I realized a couple of years ago is that I really do not like the flavor of chocolate chips, and I think that's just because I, I taste so much chocolate that's craft chocolate that I've gotten away from really liking chocolate chips. Um, they taste like sugar to me, kind of like industrial sugar. There you go, this is what it looks like. See that right there? Now, I bake it on parchment paper. I just am using a pie plate because you don't need a huge cookie pan to do it. I've already got the parchment paper there, but this is the tricky part. This is where you have to kind of shape your cookies. They are going to rise a little bit and spread out a little bit so you don't want them all together, but I use this amount of dough to make four cookies. So I just kind of divide it up with a knife and put the chunks out there. Can you see that? I'm not sure you can see that. Put the chunks out there on the parchment. And then I'm gonna use the knife to kind of shape them a little bit. So, hopefully you can guys see that. Hi, Victoria. Oh, you're getting hungry. Yes, me too. I've already got my tea. Now, another thing that you can use to make these cookies, other than the Fresco chocolate bar, or other craft chocolate bars, if that's what you've got on hand, but I really like the Madagascar flavor in here, because you've got such bright, fruity flavors. You can see I'm kind of making little square-ish, round-ish blobs of cookie. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's just four of them. I'm not giving them to the neighbors. Sorry, neighbors, if you're watching. Maybe I'll make some and bring some over to you later. Anyway, so you make the little four blobs of cookies, like that, kind of square-ish, kind of round-ish. Try to bring all the little edges in. This is what it looks like. Can you see those? So hungry. Hi, Good King. You're on uh, today at five o'clock, I think. Looking forward to it. Okay, so that's what they look like. I pop these in the oven at 325 for about 20 minutes. It really depends on your oven. Um, I've got two ovens. I've got a top and a bottom. My top oven cooks a little bit hotter than my bottom oven. So when I do it in my bottom oven, I've got to make, bake them a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put these in for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna show you what else I can use in the dough. So 20 minutes. So if you don't have the chocolate on hand, I've used this in the cookie dough too. This is the Fresco sipping chocolate. And so I just uh, take a tablespoon or maybe two of these and put this into the dough instead of the chopped chocolate. And this is, let me show you what this looks like. This is chopped chocolate. So it's already ground up and chopped up for you. See that? See that? So I'm thinking that maybe I deserve a little sipping chocolate. What questions do you have? Love that bar in any form. Yes, I love Madagascar. So I could sit there and eat it. <laughs> Good King, I want to be your neighbor. Hi, Chocolate Driven. <laughs> Hi, Chocolate Tino. Hey, guys. I'm going to get some hot water. Here we are. Make some sipping chocolate with a fresco uh, chocolate while I'm sitting here talking to you. I don't think we're going to let this whole thing go until these come out because that's 20 minutes from now. It's the very, very end of this, unless you just wanna ask me questions. This is how I make my sipping chocolate. I love this Aero Latte. I use this, oh, I don't even know how many times a day, probably 10 times a day. Huge, uh, huge glare from overhead lights. Oh, and whatever I show. Okay, sorry about that. Here's the sipping chocolate. Okay, I will have to adjust my overhead lights. I can do that, probably not right now. They're halogen and they're probably really super hot. So I don't want to touch them right now. But if I ever do this again, I will adjust those lights. Sorry guys. Oops, now I'm spilling sipping chocolate over my counter. Not like it hasn't happened before. 
chocolate coffee wine. Uh, best trick you taught me. Yes, this Aero Latte is the best thing for foaming, sipping chocolate. I usually do mine with just water because I don't like anything mucking up the flavor of my chocolate. Unless it's just plain old hot chocolate and then I don't do it with water. I'll put soy milk or almond milk or something like that in there. Can you see that? Nice and foamy. No worries, okay. Um, sometimes I use milk. Most of the time I just use water, especially if it's a craft chocolate, if it, you know, like the, the fresco baking chocolate, I'll just use, I will just use water with that. Um, I have used milk or cream um, or coconut milk or really, really thick coconut milk works really well. Um, but most of the time just water because I don't like any other flavors mucking up the, the, the chocolate, um, chocolate notes that I'm getting out of it. So, you want to see what these look like when they actually come out? Hi, Victoria. <laughs> just water. Love it. Okay, so here we have my last batch, which I just cooked a few minutes ago. I know you can't see them because of the glare, but this is what they look like. You want to take them out when the edges are just a little bit starting to brown. These were like at 20 minutes. And they are a little rough, a little bit rougher than your typical shortbread because they're not cut, they're not made rolled out or anything like that, but they're so easy. And this is what you get in 20 minutes. You get four cookies, perfect with tea or sipping chocolate. I won't sit here and make your mouth water and eat them, but they smelled wonderful. And more importantly, want to taste them. Yes, I know you do. <laughs> Throw them from there to here. You know, I should, uh, I should send somebody a batch of cookies, just four little cookies, because that's all you get, but it's just perfect. It's not too many, not too few. What do you think? Ah, uh, Chocolate Uplift, you're here too. Thank you. Uh, so you guys are wonderful for joining. Thank you so much for joining. What do you want to chat about? We've got cookies in the oven. We've got the finished cookies here. I've got sipping chocolate. Uh, will I post the recipe? Yes, I will. And I will say what the recipe is again right now if you'd like. Um, two tablespoons of butter or smart balance, if you're me. Two heaping teaspoons of sugar. Um, a quarter cup of flour. I put a little tiny, itty bitty, tiny pinch of salt. I mean, smaller than your usual small salt. And one tablespoon of craft chocolate, chopped up, or a tablespoon or two of drinking chocolate. That works very well too, especially if it's the ground drinking chocolate like this, so you've got the chunks in it. And then I bake it at 325 for 20 minutes. So yes, I will definitely post that. Uh, looking forward to baking cookies after this. Good, I hope you do. You should have all these ingredients at home. And if you're egg allergy, if you have egg allergies, there's no eggs in this. There's no milk in this. If you use it with Smart Balance, um, pretty easy to make. Can't mess it up too badly. If you don't put enough flour in it, they do come out really flat. Um, have I ever tried making them with cocoa butter? No, I have not tried making them with cocoa butter. That would be an interesting experiment. Hmm, I might have to order some cocoa butter. Anybody have cocoa butter out there? I would want to not use deodorized cocoa butter. I want it to have the full flavor in it. Um, anything else you guys want to chat about? Love that it makes only four cookies. Hi, hey Amy. Yes, four cookies. That's it. That's all I need. And then I don't feel bad about having fresh baked cookies because I've eaten the entire batch before and it's not such a bad thing. I usually share them with my husband which is a nice thing to do. Uh, next, what do you mean next, Kim? Okay. Fantastic sipping chocolate. Hi, Amy. Yes, I am drinking your sipping chocolate, the Fresco ship sipping chocolate while making Fresco cookies. Uh, wasn't trying to sell it, but yes, you have, oh, Kim has cocoa butter. Okay, well now I know where to get my cocoa butter. Uh, share or they will steal. <laughs> Mine does. Yes, you have to share with your husband or they will steal. And if I just leave them sitting on the counter, they somehow disappear. Next time. Okay, next time we'll make it with cocoa butter. We'll, we'll give that a try. And we could, Kim, we could take your cocoa um, beans and we could chop those up and use those, kind of like having nibs in it. What do you say? Because it would have a little bit of spice, maybe the love. Um, good King Cacao makes these fantastic little... Um, peeled cacao or cocoa beans, and I love it. Oh, what does chocolate uplift taste? 
Um, ever use more than one type of chocolate, like a 70 and 85 in the same cookie. I have been known to throw the last little bits of a couple different bars together into a cookie. You have to be careful about that. Sometimes they don't go together as well as you think they're going to, but most of the time it works out pretty well. Um, yes, I have, I have thrown those into a cookie if I really was craving cookies. I've done it in sipping chocolate too. Um, thank you, Chocolate Driven. Uh, chocolate Love, yes. <laughs> you guys you guys are wonderful thank you so much should we call it a day we've got 13 more minutes left on the cookies unless you have more questions pretty sure you don't want to sit here and watch me drink sipping chocolate for 15 minutes I will post pictures of the cookies when they come out how's that all right, guys, you guys have been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. I wasn't sure anybody was gonna join. I hope you make the cookies, post the cookies. I will put the recipe on both Finding Fine Chocolate and on Barbie Van Horn on Instagram, both of those, and then that will populate over to the Finding Fine Chocolate on Facebook. Oh, thank you guys. Uh, tell us about your brownies. Oh yeah, yeah, brownies. That That's what took me down this rabbit hole of, of calling. I'm going to have to give her a call back in just a couple minutes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that coming across the screen. I put it in airplane mode. What happened? Uh, good to see you too, Valerie. Hi, uh, Victoria. We'll see you very, very soon. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, when this is all over together, uh, over with, we can all get together and share cookies that, or just share chocolate. That's another good thing to do too. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.